Let's get higher up on the hill. Today, Yossi and I go on our annual adventure. This time, we head to the Tabor stream, which was believed to be the biblical river Kishon. I can feel we're getting really close, right? This is the same river where Sisera encamped with his Canaanite army and where Deborah prophesied their defeat. Wow, look at this. Wow, I finally got to the river. Oh, it's awesome. What intrigued us even more about this place is the fact that this stream starts all the way in Nazareth and flows down to the Jordan River, making this a possible route for Jesus to take when he ministered in this area. Can you imagine Jesus walking in here 2,000 years ago from Nazareth? Appreciate this trail so much more. So cool. So today Yossi and I go to an adventure in search of the biblical river Kishon. Yeah, I can hear the stream is growing louder and louder. Here it is. It is. Wow. Look at this. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> To escape the scorching heat of the summer, we decided to get out very early and make it to the river before the break of dawn. The location where we're going to is called Tabor Stream and it is very close to the mountain of Tabor, the traditional site of Jesus' transfiguration. But to get to this site, we must first pass through a kibbutz. And because we got out so early, the kibbutz could be closed making it impossible to reach the stream. There's a guy there. Should, should be. Oh, there I go. Okay. okay, so that's awesome. We made it in. We were afraid that this place is going to be closed, but this Moshe little kibbutz is open and uh, we can now park our car here safely and then make our way down to the stream. So this is a great uh, starting point. Making it safely through the kibbutz gate, we are now able to get to the starting point of our hike. We're gonna go just a bit more down here and it's gonna get pretty scary. So, oh my goodness, oh, whoa. All right, I think we're gonna make it. Due to the heavy winter rains, the road is getting too difficult to drive. So we're going to park the car at the top and walk by foot from now on. It's so quiet. See? Remember Mount Hermon? Yeah. I mean, this is not as quiet as Hermon, but yeah. still this is... All right. I think we're ready. You ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. I don't know where I'm going, but I don't want to know A predictable life is not what I want Putting one foot down, one step at a time Let the road turn ashes fine People ask all the Wow! Look at the beauty of that! Isn't this gorgeous? Amazing! Wow, look at the sunrise, it's so beautiful! As we go down to the river, we realize that the ancient village of Nain, where Jesus raised the widow's son from the dead, is just a few kilometers away. It's a unique opportunity to be out here today and hike the trail and remember where Jesus could have walked. If you think you were made just to blend right in To avoid big mistakes or to tally your sins You might get to the end doing nothing wrong To find you never lived at all Wow! Look at this! Wow, I finally got to the river. 
Oh, it's awesome. You can see a little uh, river flow right there. So I think the uh, walk continues over there, right? Yeah. There's, okay. there's a trail marking. All right, let's go. Let's cross it. Oh. 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 Can you imagine swimming in this right now? Oh no, <laughs> that was way too cold for my blood. Now that we have crossed the water, there should be ancient ruins in the vicinity. An excavation site that goes by the name Tel Rechesh. We're getting closer to something ancient and I wonder if this hill is a Tel and there is an ancient uh, place up there. Hey, this area could be of historical significance and potentially biblical significance. So let's go and explore. Yep, let's do it. The narrow opening between the thorns makes us believe that this trail will lead us to the ancient site. However, climbing it will not be easy. Okay. Oh wow, look. This is definitely ancient. Look at that. They've excavated here. I mean, this thing, this is ancient. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Wow. Tel Rechesh is located in the east part of the Lower Galilee, near Kibbutz Gazit, which is southeast of Mount Tabor. It's a magnificent mount that is 45 dunam of land and rises 34 meters high. This site remains in active excavation since 2006. This is incredible. Wow. And while there are still many mysteries that lie hidden beneath the surface waiting to be unearthed, we do know a few things from the past archaeological digs. It appears to be a first century Jewish farm, where livestock was grown, olives were harvested, and it was located on a main route which made it the perfect location for trade of local goods. Some of the findings, such as the olive press, date all the way back to the Bronze Age. And it is believed that this place is the biblical village of Eneharath, or in Hebrew, Anaharat. Mentioned in Joshua 19, it was a village that belonged to the tribe of Issachar. Can you just imagine the ancient Israelites living here? It's just mind-blowing. I can just now imagine how blessed Issachar was with such a beautiful land. Wow. The most fascinating discovery in this place is the remains of an ancient synagogue. And if this place had a synagogue, then could have Jesus of Nazareth been here? as he preached in the synagogues in the Galilee region. I really wonder if Jesus was ever here. This place is only 10 minutes from Nazareth and only five miles from Nain, where Jesus raised from the dead a son of a widow. So it is very possible that Jesus himself stopped here. In this very synagogue, as he was traveling the Galilee, preaching the gospel, healing people and fulfilling the ancient prophecies. But no matter how interesting this excavation site is, Yossi and I seem to have lost our track and now must find our way back to the river. I don't see the next sign. I have no idea where we go left or right. Due to the heavy rain season in the past winter, this area has overgrown with bushes and thorns. The bushes grew so tall that they hid the trail markings. So to find our way, we turned to the GPS and the satellite maps on our phone for help. I really tried to avoid using digital map or GPS, but we're kind of lost. Can't find the trail anymore and can't see it from the hill. I think we're gonna go back onto the marked trail that we have on the map and not rely on this signage. This is insane. Sound it looks like a path, but we can't find the next marking. Where do we go? You know, I see, there's the mark. There. Woo! <laughs> you would never find that. Wow. How on earth would you see that from anywhere? Wow, we found it finally. So the vegetation is so high. The marking is so small. It's little, faded, in between big bushes. You can't see it from afar. But well, we found it. Let's keep going. Look at that! Wow! I like that. Yeah. And I can hear the water down there. Wow! 
Wow. Look at that. Whoa. There's, a, there's a crab. Yo. There's a crab. We're yeah. by the water. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't Back. it so nice to find the trail? Yeah. We have finally made it to the trail of the ancient river. But is it really the one? Interestingly enough, if you look up the modern maps, you'll find that this river appears under the name Tabor Stream. And if you look for the river Kishon, you'll find it lied to the west. However, we found out that Tabor Stream was actually called Kishon up until the 19th century. And there's plenty of historical writings to show for that. For example, a 3rd century historian Eusebius of Caesarea mentions that the river by Mount Tabor is actually the biblical river Kishon. Then a geographer of the 14th century says that the Kishon River empties into the Jordan River, just like the modern-day Tabor stream that we're walking today. And to top off the evidence, maps produced before the 19th century also identify this river as Kishon. So if this is the true river Kishon, then it creates a problem. Because the Bible mentions that Kishon is also where Elijah slaughtered the Baal prophets. But Elijah was at Mount Carmel, so it is more likely that he went down to this modern-day river Kishon. Does this mean that the modern identification is correct? Which river is it? Is it the river by Mount Tabor or the one by Mount Carmel? Some believe that this can be explained by assuming that there used to be two rivers named Kishon. Or another possible explanation is that these two rivers used to be connected. So it is very likely that the Kishon River that Elijah went to is today's Kishon, while the one Deborah went to is today's Tabor Stream, the one we're exploring today, the stream that starts in Nazareth and ends in the Jordan River. It just makes so much sense that we have Mount Tabor out there. All the battles with Barak and Deborah happen so close here, and it makes sense that this be this river that had been renamed into Nachal Tabor, but must have been that this river would have been the Kishon River. Even though we have found the river, we have not seen enough water in it to match the biblical events. But we heard that there is a waterfall just down the trail that has heavy torrents during the winter rains. As seeing it could help us understand how Sisera's army could have been swept away in the water, we decided to go and check it out. Careful now. <sighs> But to get to the waterfall, we must first cross the river. Can we cross here? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of deep in there. So just to avoid dangers of uh, falling in and hurting ourselves, I'm going around. Due to the murky water, crossing the river could be dangerous, as the bottom of the river might hold sharp and unstable rocks that recently fell from the cliffs. But I can't even see a crossing here either. I don't know if I can find another crossing. But since there's no other option, we are forced to cross the murky stream. Go, go, go. Whoa. Whoa. Wow, I think we're really close. I think we're getting very, very close to the waterfall. Yeah, I can hear the stream louder and louder. Wow! It's cool. Oh, it's beautiful. Man. Oh, that is incredible. We have finally made it to the falls, which in the winter time are significantly more abundant than water and during heavy rains may even cause flooding. Another visual picture of how Sisera's military could have been swept away in the torrent of the river as recorded in Judges chapter 5. But before we leave, Yossi suggests we jump in the water to cool off. And even though the water is murky and it's hard to see if it's safe, Yossi has done it before and knows that the pool is clear of rocks and is deep enough for a jump. Have you jumped from this rock? Well, how far should I jump? I'm a little nervous. Yeah. Three, two, one. Whoa! 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 
That's wonderful. Let's do this again. Let's do it. Let's do it. Coffee. Time for coffee. Let's go. Let's go. One and a half for you. And... Today, despite the obstacles, we were able to see the river and imagine the biblical events that took at this very place. There was just so much of exciting history, archaeological finds, and beautiful nature. Yet, the most memorable of all was doing this journey together as brothers. Well, it's been awesome. I'm really glad we did this hike. Me too. The marking is so small, it's little, faded, in between big bushes. You can't see it from afar, but we found it. Let's keep going. Oh, let's do a high five. <laughs> so Rhoda packed us some snacks for the road, and this is a faus. It's like a cucumber, but it's not a cucumber. It's more juicy, more uh, watery, and it's really, really nice. Faus. Yeah, you got some homemade olives. You want to try some? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh. Different. Yeah. I can see what you're trying to do here. You're trying to make your pack lighter. It's good. Oh, look at these. They're giant. These are like just giant thorns. That's, look at these giant thorns. They're huge. Gazit? Gazit? What is this? All roads lead to Rome kind of thing? <laughs> no wonder we're lost. Yes. Yes. We're back. 